David Wood wrote, The Quran and Hadith certainly allow sex with prepubescent girls. He was certain. He wrote the word certainly. That's, what, that's the word he used. I was baffled. As an individual who researches Islam, I have never come across such a teaching in Islam. So I felt his claim was extremely dubious from the word go. But I went to the four great schools in Islamic law. The madhab of Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik and Ahmed bin Hanbal. All Muslims worth their salt know who these individuals are and the of and the type of authority these individuals bring to the table. These scholars and their subsequent researchers, let's not forget the researchers, knew the Quran and Ahadith better than David Wood. I repeat, they knew the Quran and Ahadith better than David Wood, and guess what? They do not agree with David Wood. All four schools of jurisprudence tell you that you cannot have sex with prepubescent girls. The game is up, David. The game is up. We realize David Wood is being unscholarly and misleading. Let me reiterate, he is being unscholarly and misleading. Why did David Wood not bother to do a bit of research before making such an erroneous claim? A bit of sincere research, it would have freed him of such error, such humiliation. It really would have. I mean, he could have just hopped onto muhaddis.org, which shows that the great Hassan al-Basri taught that Islam does not allow people to do anything of an intimate nature with somebody who has not reached puberty. Hassan al-Basri knew Islam better than David Wood. Did David Wood not stop to look at the work of the famous Orientalist William Montgomery Watt? This man was no friend of Islam. But this man never made such unscholarly claims as David Wood. Though what knew Islam better than David Wood? Do you notice a pattern developing here? All those who know Islam better disagree with David Wood. All the authorities, either scholars and Islamic law, as well as those who know Islam sufficiently well, disagree with David Wood. Essentially, our brother David Wood was presenting misinformation, erroneous claims. Quite simply, David Wood was wrong, badly wrong. David, I don't want to prolong your agony and embarrassment. I'm sure you realize your mistake that you've made here, but I do ask you to lend me your ears for a few more moments, please, please. Let me make a few suggestions, friendly suggestions, friendly being the operative word. I'm not forcing you to take up these suggestions, but I believe it will be prudent for you to do so. Please, so please do so. I believe you got this misinformation or these false claims from a Christian website. I'm not going to say which one I believe it to be, but this is my gut feeling. Not a fact, but if this is the case, then I ask you to go to the website that you got this misinformation from. Let them know that they are wrong. Ask them to remove their misguided claims from circulation before he misleads, beguiles and misguides others just like he misled you and beguiled and misguided you and he threw you into the arena of manifest error. He really did. I also ask you to do something else, brother. I ask you to apologize to my Christian friends as you were presenting misinformation primarily to them. So please do this. And finally, I ask you to apologize to the Muslim community who have been deeply hurt by these false claims of yours. But I'm an individual who likes to end up on positive notes. I feel we can learn a great deal of uh, wisdom from this. We can realize that um, this unfortunate episode teaches us that we should learn Islam from the Muslims, go to your local Islamic center if you're looking into Islam. Go to uh, authorities in Islam, scholars, those who know Islam well, mus learned Muslims. Ask them questions. And the Muslims also realize that they should be on their guard against misinformation about Islam. 
There's a lot of propaganda, false propaganda out there about Islam that's being propagated by those who do not like Islam.